Hey everyone, today we're going to start a short story in our collections book. It's called Tell Them Not to Kill Me. It's in page 369. I want you to open your books. At the top you will find a short background about Juan Rolfo, the writer. He was a Mexican writer. He wrote only one novel and a book of short stories. What's important about him is knowing that his style, which is characterized by shifting points of view, flashbacks, and a stream of consciousness technique, influenced other Latin American authors. The two techniques that you should be concerned with are shifting points of view and flashbacks. Let me remind you of flashback. It's to remember some events that happened in the past and then returning to the present events that are happening in the story. Shifting point of view, here it's meant that he is shifting between the narrators and also shifting between first person narration and third person narration. Uh, what's the importance of this? He is affecting the reader or benefiting the reader by giving him different points of view from different characters about the same events of the story. The second thing that is important about Juan Rolfo is that his stories or his writings reflect the hardship and violence that characterized rural Mexican struggle to survive. Keep that in mind while reading that his stories are characterized by realism uh, concerning the setting, the characters, and the events. Now let's start reading and while reading, make predictions about the main character in the story. Write down any questions you generate during reading. Tell them not to kill me, Justino. Go on and tell them that. For God's sake, tell them. Tell them, please, for God's sake. I can't. There's a surgeon there who doesn't want to hear anything about you. Make him listen to you. Use your wits and tell him this, this, that scaring me has been enough. Tell him, please, for God's sake. But it's not just to scare you. It seems that they really mean to kill you. And I don't want to go back there. So the story begins with a man begging another man called Justino to tell some man to spare his life, but Justino refuses. As for the structure, we don't know any of the men or events because the writer didn't give us any introduction until line 10 when we discover something about Justino. Let's continue reading. Go on once more, just once to see what you can do. No, I don't feel like going because if I do, they will know I am your son. So we understand now he is your son. If I keep bothering them, they will end up knowing who I am and will decide to shoot me too. Better leave things the way they are. Now what effect does that make on the reader? In other words, how do you feel about this situation of an old man begging his son to tell them not to kill him? And his son refuses. Go on, Justino, tell them to take a little pity on me. Just tell them that. Justino clenched his teeth and shook his head, saying no. And he kept on shaking his head for some time. Tell the surgeon to let you see the colonel. And tell him how old I am, how little I am worth. What will he get out of killing me? Nothing. So until this point, we have comprehended some information about three characters. The first one is the old man who is afraid or rather terrified because he is about to be killed. He is old, poor, pathetic. We as readers feel sorry for him. Two, Justino, the old man's son who refuses to tell uh, some men not to kill his father and for that readers consider him selfish, cruel um, and cold-hearted. Three, a colonel who apparently decides for killing um, and refuses to spare this old man's life. Until this point, we as readers pity this old, helpless man begging for his life. Turn your paper to page 370 and let's read this part. After all, he must have soul. Tell him to do it for the blessed salvation of his soul. Now please underline or highlight this part because it's very ironic. And as we read, we are going to understand why it's ironic. Justino got up from the pile of stones which he was sitting on and walked to the gate of the coral. Then he turned around to say, All right, I will go. But if they decide to shoot me too, who will take care of my wife and kids? It's now that the reason behind Justino's refusing to save his father is revealed, 
it's because he's concerned about his wife and kids and who would take care of them if he got if he gets shot what does this add to the reader's information does it change the reader's perspective does it change how you feel about Justino now he's asking his father if he gets shot who is going to take care of his wife and kids let's see his father's response Providence will take care of them, Justino. You go there now and see what you can do for me. That's what matters. Now I want you to consider this response. What does the old man mean? He is simply telling his son, go and try to save me, and if you get shot, Providence will take care of your wife and kids. Now how does this affect your view as a reader? of this old man responding to his son like this. Let's start the next paragraph. They had brought him in at dawn. The morning was well along now and he was still there tied to a post waiting. He couldn't keep still. He tried to sleep for a while to calm down but he couldn't. He wasn't hungry either. All he wanted was to live. Now that he knew they were really going to kill him. All he could feel was his great desire to stay alive, like a recently resuscitated man. Now what is the difference here in this paragraph? What do you notice? Well, to make it easier, who is talking? You will notice that the conversation between Justino and his father is over. The paragraph starts in third person narration. Now let's read the next paragraph and highlight any new information about time, characters or events. Who would have thought that old business that happened so long ago and that was buried the way he thought it was would turn up? That business when he had to kill Don Loop, not for nothing either as the Alimas tried to make out but because he had his reasons. He remembered Don Loop Terreras, the old the Perta di Pedra, and besides that his compadre was the one he, Jovencio Nava, had to kill because he'd refused to let him pastor his animals when he was the owner of the Perta di Pedra and his compadre. Okay, what's new in this paragraph? Well, we as readers now know that this man is called Jovencio Nava. He was brought and tied to a post because many years ago he committed a murder. He killed a man called Don Luke Terreras. In this paragraph, we have two techniques to consider. First, the narration. It's a third person narration. Rolfo, the writer, starts here a third-person narration telling the reader information about the man and his crime and offers two points of view, the Alimas and Justinos. Let's see each one of them. The Alimas, who, uh, which means the people from Alima, uh, they think he killed Don Luke for nothing, while Justino, he had his reasons, as in line 36. Then goes on stating these reasons that Jovencio had to kill Don Luke because he'd refused to let him pasture his animals. It means let his animals feed on his grass when he was the owner of the land and Jovencio's compadre, which means friend. The narration continues and the reader gets to know what happened and gets to form his own opinion about the murder and whether it's for good reasons or for nothing. Notice the second technique used here, which is going back to state events happened in the past or previous to the present um, story events. What is the technique called? Yes, flashback. Let's read the next paragraph. At first he didn't do anything because he felt compromised, but later when the drought came, when he saw how his animals were dying off one by one, plagued by hunger, and how his compadre Loop continued to refuse to let him use his pest, then was when he began breaking through the fence and driving his herd of skinny animals to the pasture where they could get their fill of grass. And Don Loop didn't like it and ordered the fence mended, so that he, Juventunava, had to cut open the hole again. So during the day, the hole was stopped up and at night it was opened again, while the stock stayed there right next to the fence, always waiting, the stock that before had lived just smelling the grass without being able to taste it. And he and Don Loop argued again and again without coming to an any to any ag So now we understand that when Don Loop refused to let 
to venture's animals go and feed from his land, Don Luke started to trespass his land to feed his animals.